In Jesus' name we pray. Our Father, we thank you for bringing us to the conclusion of a national workers' retreat. We thank you, Lord, because you've spoken to our hearts. You have ministered to us, no doubt. And we have prayed unto you. We have taken some decisions since we came. We pray, O Lord, you will seal, confirm, maintain those decisions by the power of your grace in our lives in Jesus' name. We pray, O Lord, as we come to this concluding session, that you will speak to our hearts yourself in Jesus' name. That, Lord, as we have decided to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, we will not look back, we will not backslide, will not be turned around by any circumstance around us in Jesus' name. In days of trial, in days of temptation, in times, in days of affliction, in days when the devil may try to resist our way in moving forward in this Christian journey, we pray you will remind us that we have laid our hands on the plow. And we cannot, we must not, we will not look back. And therefore, Lord, we pray that underneath every one of us will be the everlasting arms that will support, that will sustain, that will keep us in this way of righteousness till the very end in Jesus' name. We pray, o Lord, that as we share together now, in this branch of life, the word of God that strengthens the soul. We pray that you'll strengthen every one of us in Jesus' name. Speak to everyone. In Jesus' name, we pray. We have come by the grace of God to the conclusion of our workers' retreat for this period. And the Lord has been so faithful to us in revealing to us His might, His will, His word, His way. And no doubt many of us who are not very sure where we were standing spiritually, the Lord Himself has drawn us closer to Himself. And now we can join with a soloist that were put our feet on God's road and never will we roam anymore and never we will be turned around. And as we have listened to all the seminars and all the teachings on Bible doctrine as well as all the messages coming from the Word of God and we have realized too that we need to spend this life for the Lord. You have realized as we have been reminded by a minister who sang to us, giving us the message, an, unforget, an unforgettable message, that we have just only one life, and it will soon be gone. And only what is done for Christ will last. And the choir then said, if there is only one life, if only what's done for Christ will last, and if it will soon be gone, you want to then join the team of the people that are being called to be soldiers for Christ. And then they ask you a question, will you be a volunteer for Jesus? Realizing that it requires and it demands loyalty, loyalty unto him, faithfulness to his word, a commitment, a consecration, a vow that you will say, I will. I give myself to the Lord and I will be faithful to everything I've uttered from my mouth. Already we've heard much message, necessary message from our choir, from the singers. All I need to do is just to now confirm what these ministering singers have told us already in the words of those songs for you to understand that all they have told us, all they have challenged us with, come right 
from the word of God. Now in Psalm 50 and verse 5. Psalm 50 verse 5. Gather my saints together unto me. Those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Gather my saints together unto me. There is something in that verse, looking back to what God has always said, to what God has always done. There is something in this verse, looking to a present reality. There is something in this verse that looks beyond time. That looks beyond. All the time we'll spend in the world here. And looks right into eternity. And in the eons of eternity. The Lord himself will still be saying. Gather my saints together unto me. If you are a student of the Bible. You will know. That from the time of the children of Israel. God had been requesting, demanding. That his saints, his people, will be gathered together unto him. You remember the words of Moses unto Pharaoh. Let my people go, that they may worship me, that they may come to serve me on the mountain that I have appointed for them. In a way, God was saying, Moses, you go back to Egypt and gather my saints unto me. Those people that are willing in remembrance of a covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, with Jacob, their forefathers. In remembrance of the covenant that I had with Abraham and the Jewish and the Hebrew people. Go and gather them. You are not going to gather them unto yourself. You will come to this mountain to worship. You will gather them unto me. You remember too. That even after that had been done, and they had landed in the land of Canaan, and then they went back away from the Lord, it came to the point they were scattered because of God's chastisement upon them. But then once again, God raised up a man called Cyrus. And then God said again, here is my servant, I know him. And the children of Israel will come out of captivity. And he was telling this man, I've appointed you. Once again, gather my people unto me. And then, the commandment went out. All the people that had a mind to serve the Lord. And to go back to the city of our living God. And again, they were gathered unto him. Not only that... In this present time, God has raised up ministers of the gospel, gathering people, or the sheep I have, not of this fold, them I must bring, I must gather them again together. But then, the time will be coming, this is not going to the future. And Jesus Christ himself said, after he had given a parable of the kingdom, and he said, the time will come when the Almighty will send his angels to all the four corners of the world. And then will they gather together from every place, from every locality. They will gather the people of God unto him. And then will forever be with the Lord. He will gather the wheat and the fruit. The fruit of evangelistic labor. He will gather the result of Calvary. He will gather the people that have come to the Lord. Through what Jesus accomplished on the cross of Calvary. He will gather them unto him. And then the chaff he will burn with fire. Gather my saints together unto me. But who are those saints? Those that have made... A covenant with me by sacrifice. As you look at the children of Israel once again, who came out of the land of Egypt. They had been there for hundreds of years. And they were already settled. It was like, Moses, leave us alone. Don't disturb us. Here we've got wives. 
We've got children. We've got houses. We have settled down. And we have even adjusted to the culture of the people. For those people to leave their houses, to leave their farmland, and to leave their property, and to leave what they were familiar with all these hundreds of years, and then to leave and to go seeking for a place they have never known, seeking for a place they have never gone to, it took sacrifice, commitment, consecration, a vow that although we have not seen the place, Although nobody has told us really that he has been in that land of Canaan, flowing with milk and honey, but the word of the Lord has told us, we will pay the price, we will sacrifice, and we will go. Gather my people unto me. Who are those people? Those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. And today, the people that are still being gathered unto the Lord, listen, it is possible to be gathered to the founder of a church without any sacrifice, without any consecration, without any vow, without any commitment, without absolute surrender. But if we're going to be gathered unto the Lord, even in this present day, if we're going to be counted and numbered among the people of God, even in this day, if we're going to say unto him, shall the gathering of the people be, and we're going to be part of the people that are gathered unto the Lord, it's going to take sacrifice, willingness to pay the price, consecration and vow, a commitment of never turning back again. A commitment of saying, come what may, whatever it may be, whatever the devil may plan, and whatever that he may throw at me, I have made up my mind, I am going to follow the Lord. The people, those people that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. And so you will see that when Jesus came, and he began to pick them one by one, here we find him at the Sea of Galilee. Here we find him in Tiberias. Here we find him in Capernaum. Here we find him on the street. And then he challenged those people and he met Matthew there. And Matthew there had the custom and had all the money. And Jesus began to gather them. Gather them one by one. And he's gathered Peter and James and John and Andrew and Philip and Nathaniel and Bartholomew. And then he came to Matthew. And then he said... I'm gathering you to follow me. It took sacrifice. Those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. And Matthew left everything and followed after him. And it is still the same today. Jesus Christ the same. Yesterday, today and forever. If we're going to follow the Lord, it's going to take some sacrifice. It is going to take some commitment. It is going to take consecration, commitment, surrender, yieldedness unto the Lord. Gather my saints. Gather the people I know to be mine. They are my treasure. They are my people. They are the saints that have given themselves unto me. They are my property. They belong to me even though they are still living in the world. Gather them together. I don't want my saints to be isolated. Saying, I can read the Bible by myself. I can follow the Lord by myself. I can follow Jesus Christ after all. I'm born again. I'm sanctified. I'm a saint of God. And I can live as an isolated saint without belonging to the church. And I can listen to cassettes all alone by myself. And listen to those cassettes and go on my knees and pray. I have a copy of the Bible. Isolated saint there. Isolated saint there. Isolated saint there. Not under the leadership of any pastor. Not under the leadership of any leader appointed by God. Not under the control of anyone. He says, I can do it by myself. I know how to pray. I have the Bible. I have the cassettes. I have the literature. I have everything. God doesn't want... A person that is just saying, I'm a Christian, in isolation. And God said, gather them together. That's why we have a church in the, in the village there. Gather them together there. That's why we have a church in that town. Gather them together. I do not want my people being scattered 
and separated and isolated and segregated. Everyone going his own way and doing his own thing. Everyone doing that which is right in his own sight. Everyone saying, I know how to do everything by myself. I can, you know, already I'm born again. Already I'm in the kingdom of God. I just travel anywhere I want to travel to. I go to anywhere I want to go to. I do not want any church congregation to limit my liberty. I want to stay on my own. There's nothing like that in the Bible. Gather them together. Gather them together. And in that local government, gather them together. In that region, gather them together. It says, gather my saints together unto me. It is when you gather them together unto me, I will come into their midst. Where two or three are gathered in my name. Not where that one says I can pray. That one will not come to church. And then it says, I make covenant with God that I will not go to church. I want to read the whole Bible. In this uh, week or this month, I won't go to Bible study. I won't go to the Bible evangelism session. I will not go to the study scripture. And I will not go for Sunday worship. And I'm worshiping the Lord. I'm waiting upon the Lord. It's a useless thing. Because the Lord is not going to bless it. He doesn't want that isolation. He doesn't want that autonomy. He doesn't want that independence. God himself, the Almighty, he has said, gather my people together unto me. Get together. Uh, do you see us? We're here together. And, uh, you know, by the grace of God, I wrote the letters out. And I wrote to all the region overseers. I said, it is time for our workers, the saints of God, to be gathered together unto him. Oh yes, you know, even to be here, it took sacrifice. To be here, you have to leave some things behind. Those who have not got uh, salaries for some months, it took sacrifice to be here. Those who did not have a lot of the things of this world, it took time to be, it took sacrifice to be here. Those who even have been facing persecution, it took sacrifice to be here. And those who have been sick, those who have been weary, those who are suffering persecution, it took sacrifice to be here. That simply woman that has an uncom um, uncooperating uh, husband, it took sacrifice to be here. And the husband that has unruly really children the children that are not cooperating with him and he saying, oh God, oh God, when will these children change? When you got that letter, that information, gather my saints together unto me it took sacrifice for you to live where you are and to get here and if it takes sacrifice to get here, it's going to take sacrifice to get there you understand? The rapture at the time of the rapture, when that final call will come, and Jesus will be in the air, and then once again, once again, the, uh, the archangel will sound, and then we have, we have the voice of the Lord, and then we are to be gathered together. Oh yes, it's going to take sacrifice. The people that have made covenant with me by sacrifice, those are the people that on that day will be there. I pray you will be there in Jesus' name. And so we are talking on consecration and vow of the steadfast. Consecration and vow of the steadfast. We are going to look at three subtitles. Number one, consecration and vow of God's children. Consecration and vow of God's children. Number two, faithfulness to God. Faithfulness to God. Number three, steadfastness in God's word. Number one, consecration and vow of God's children. You see, consecration, already I've read it to you, is something demanded by God. Loyalty. Submission, total, complete yieldedness unto God, coming to the cross of Jesus Christ and saying, O oh Lord, I'll never turn away, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you. I stand on the word that came out of my mouth. I will follow you till the end. It takes that. It takes that. There may be people that will tell you, now, there's no consecration anymore. What does that mean? No consecration in the Bible again? No consecration in the mind of God again? 
Does that mean that God does not require consecration anymore? Oh yes, He does. In fact, you will never make it in the Christian journey. And you will never get to even the border of that promised land without consecration, without commitment, without absolute yieldedness unto the Lord. Who says there is no consecration? People may backslide. When Judas Iscariot lost his consecration and his commitment and his promise and his vow and everything that he had ever told the Lord, that didn't mean that there was no consecration anymore. The word of God still stands. And the Bible says, let God be true. And all men, liars, but God will still be true. So then point number one, consecration and vow of God's children. Let me give you examples of consecration and vow before the Lord. The Lord commands us to be consecrated unto Him. He says, My son, give me thine heart. He calls us to consecration. The Lord Jesus Christ said, Take my yoke upon you. He calls us to consecration. And in the epistles we are told that Christ has died for us. So that henceforth, those that live will henceforth not live unto themselves, but live unto him who has called us and redeemed us. He calls us to consecration. Not only that, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of the Lord, that you will surrender, dedicate, and give yourself, your body unto the Lord as a living sacrifice, which is your reasonable service, is calling us unto consecration. And the multitude followed after the Lord Jesus Christ, and then he turned back, and he looked unto them, and he said, He that hateth not his father and mother and wife, and children, and brothers, and sisters, yea, and his own life also. He cannot be my disciple, and whosoever of you will not take his cross, bear his cross daily. He cannot be my disciple. He said, which king, going to battle, will not consider if he's able to face a greater army that is coming. Otherwise, while he has done that, he will then try to appease the other king because he sees that he cannot wage war against him. Then he concluded, and then he said, Whosoever be of you that will not forsake all that he has, he cannot be my disciple. What is that? He demands consecration. And as was going on the way, one of the scribes ran after him and followed him and said, Lord, Master, I will follow you. And Jesus, knowing his mind, knowing that he wasn't a person wanting to consecrate and yield to him, he looked at him and said, The foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. And that man turned back without any consecration. He couldn't follow. And here came another man saying, I will follow you, but let me go and bid farewell to those in the house. And then the Lord said that no one, having laid his hands on the plow, looking back, will be fit for the kingdom of God. Here was the third one that said, Lord, I will follow you, but let me first go and bury my father. He said, let the dead bury their dead. But you, come and follow after me. You see that he demands consecration? Oh yes, he demands consecration from you and from me. If we're going to follow the Lord, gather my people together unto me. Who are those my people, my saints, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice? He demands it. If he demands it, the only thing we can do if we want to follow the Lord, the only thing we can do if we're children of God, the only thing we can do if we're saints of God, the only thing we can do if we want to be in that promised land eventually, is that we will come to him absolutely yielded and surrendered and consecrated unto him. I pray you will. I said I pray you will. In Ruth chapter 1, Ruth chapter 1, and verse 11. And Naomi said, Turn again, my daughters. Why will ye go with me? Are there yet any more sons in my womb? That they may be your husbands. Turn again, my daughters. Go your way. 
for I am too old to have an husband. If I should say, I have hope. If I should have an husband also tonight, and should also bear sons, would he tarry for them till they were grown? Would he stay for them from having husbands? Nay, my daughters, for it grieveth me much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord is gone out against me. And they lifted up their voice. And wept again, and Opa kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clave unto her. Sooner or later, we will know the difference between those who are committed to the Lord and those who are not committed to the Lord. Sooner or later, circumstances will prove. Situations will make us detect. And the things, the winds that blow, and the ideas that come, and the utterances coming from others to you will make us know where you stand in relation to consecration and vow. Here were two women. When this woman, Naomi, when she first spoke to them, they both said, no, we are going to follow you. No, we are going to the land of the people of God. Yes, we are going to serve your God. Then he began, she began to tell them the cost, the price to pay, the sacrifice, what it will mean if you leave your land, if you leave your tribe, if you leave your tradition, if you leave all your past and then you follow me to the land of God's people. And then when he counted, she counted everything and said, Do you know one thing? I cannot promise you having husbands. Because we're going to that land. It's long we let ho I let home. My husband is gone. My two sons are gone. Who married you? The you two women? Now even if I have hope, and I say that I will marry tonight, how am I sure I'm going to have sons that will marry? Even if I had sons, will you wait for them until they grow up? Oh, there's a price to pray. There is a sacrifice. And therefore, he said, she said, go back. Because see what has happened to me. My God has chastised me and disciplined me and rebuked me and rebuked our family for leaving the land of the people of God to come to this strange land. And you see the hand of the Lord has been heavy upon me. But I have no choice. Although the hand of the Lord has been heavy upon me, He is my God. And I will serve Him. And I'm still going back home. I have nothing at home. In fact, people are going to ask me, Where is your husband? And I will cry and say, He is gone. Where are your two sons? And I will cry and say, they are gone. Although they may even ridicule me and make fun of me and say, why did you go? What? Yet, I'm going to go back. I'm going to pay the price. But you, if you follow me, although I'm willing to bear the shame for myself, I'm willing to endure the bitterness for myself, I'm willing to go back to my land, although I'm going empty-handed. But I will go. Isn't that paying the price? Oh yes, it's going to take that price. Is going to take that price. Sacrifice. And then he said, she said, consider it. And then Opa, when Opa considered it, oh, she said, I'm sorry, I can't pay that price. I'd rather go back. I don't want to separate from you, but I'll have to go back. I don't want to leave you, but I'll have to go back. Naomi, this will be the last time I'm seeing you. But I don't like to leave. But if I don't leave, how about husband? How about children? How about future? How about care? Therefore, bye-bye. Bye-bye to the God of Israel. Bye-bye to true worship. Bye-bye to all that God had called them to. And after she left, then the challenge came unto Ruth. And a challenge is coming to you too. Now in verse 15. Verse 14. And they lifted up their voice. 
and wept again, and Opa kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clave unto her. We pastors, we have experienced that sometimes. That somebody we love, somebody that we expect, will get back to, will get to the land of promise with us. Somebody we expect will eventually make the rapture with us. Somebody we expect that we are going to travel together, hand in hand, and go to the land of God, the country that is better than any other country, the country having foundation not made with hand. Somebody we expected that we're going to go hand in hand at a time of the rapture, that we're just going to embrace one another and go like that. Sometimes we pastors have had the experience that they will act like upper and they will say, Pastor, we love you. And they will kiss us, I mean spiritually, emotionally, and they will cry and they will say, Pastor, I don't want to leave you. You've been teaching us the word of God. I appreciate your life. I have nothing against you. And I know you have nothing against me. And I know how much you love me. But, but, the price is too great for me. I cannot pay the price. I am going. And then we say, where are you going? Don't you remember heaven? Don't you remember the rapture? Don't you remember all the consecration, all the commitment you made to the Lord many years ago? Don't you remember what you have preached yourself? Don't you remember how you have prayed for other people? Don't you remember how you have said, life or death, I will follow the Lord? Yes, I remember. But the price is too great for me now. I want to change. I can't do without palming now. I can't do without lipsticks now. I can't do without jewelry now. Jewelry is more important to me than heaven now. And the palming is more important to me now. That consecration and commitment to the Lord now. And we'll say, don't go like that. Don't go like that. Then they begin to cry. I'm sorry, I will have to go. I'm sorry, I will have to go. I cannot live my life like this. Then they leave. And then you are left alone. And then we ask you, what are you going to do now? Those who brought you into this church have left. Your own soul winners have left. And the people that you are together, leading Bible study together, or the people you are together, having house fellowship together, the people you are together, coming to the uh, workers retreat together in the past, the people that were in the choir with you together before they have left, what are you going to do? The challenge came to Ruth. And Naomi said, let me read it to you. In verse 15, she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people and unto her gods. You don't go back just ordinarily. If you go back, you go back to your people and to your God. To your tradition and to your superstition. You go back to the worldliness and to the things you let before. You cannot go back ordinarily. If you go back, you are going back to your idol and to your God. And she said unto Ruth, your sister-in-law is gone back unto her people and unto her God. And then Naomi said, Ruth, don't you feel lonely now? Don't you feel you are alone? Are you going to stay like that? Ruth, consider it. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. There was no campaign. There was no begging. Ruth, please don't go. Stay with me. How are we going to get congregation if you go? What will remain of deeper life if you go? Okay, we will put you in the choir. We will make you an usher. What are they promising you over there? They want to make you a bishop over there. We will make you an overseer. What are they promising you there? They are going to give you greater salary there. We will increase your salary. No. Naomi said, Ruth, I am going back home to the people of God. And one day I am going to see the Lord for myself. And I will see Abraham and Isaac. And Jacob and the prophets. I'm going to the land now, the land of my nativity and the land of the people of God. But not only that, eventually I'm going to transfer from that place and I'm going to go beyond. But I'm willing to go alone. 
I'm not looking for company. Ruth, go back. I'll go alone. The journey may appear long. It may appear there are weeds on the way. It may even appear there are some uh, beasts and lions and wild animals on the way. I'm only a woman, old woman Naomi, but I will go alone. Ruth, if you like to go back, I cannot promise you greater salary. I cannot promise you husband. I cannot promise you anything. I cannot promise you that we are going to change the standard of the word of God. Here we are in this church wanting to contend for the faith. Once delivered unto the saints. And we are not going to change. If you want to stay. You want to stay on the basis that you know that this is the way to heaven. The way of the cross leads home. You are bidding farewell to the way of the world. To walk in it never more. For your Lord says come and you've made up your mind you want to go. Where he is waiting for you at the open door. That's the reason you want to wait if you are waiting. And so now me told Ruth and said you can go back with your sister-in-law. Let us see consecration now. Praise the Lord. A woman. She didn't have all that we know now. All the scriptures we read now. All the encouragement we have now. Everything we know now she didn't know. But she had consecration. I pray you will have consecration in Jesus name. Now in verse 16 and Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee or to return from following after thee. For we that thou goest, I will go. That's consecration. I don't know the way. It may be narrow. May be tough. May look lonely. May look this. It's the way of self-denial. It's the way of the cross. It's the way of crucifixion. It's the way of yieldedness, absolute surrender to the Lord. It's the way of patience. I may not get everything I want to get in one day. Didn't you all hear our sister asking the question yesterday that she had that uh, a problem in the leg and yet she said healing or no healing, I'm going to follow after the Lord. And she says she believed God and still waiting for the manifestation. We cannot say that, you know, there will be sh- enough sugar in every cup of tea, enough butter, on every loaf of bread. We cannot tell you that when the sun shines, you will not feel the heat. We cannot promise you that there will be no persecution. We cannot promise you that the devil will not try to wage a war against you to resist your way in going to heaven. But what we can say is this, at the end of the road, there will be no more tears. There will be no more curse. There will be no more sickness. Then it says the Lord of the land. The Lamb will be the light of the place. When it says, behold, I make all things new. And we know that the end is not far. The end is not far. If you look at a lot of things that are happening in the world today, you will know that the end is not far. And it just remains a short time. And any time from now, the trumpet will sound. And then gather together unto me. All my saints, the people that have made sacrifice, that have made covenant with me by sacrifice. I pray you will be there in Jesus' name. And so Ruth, here is, here is the word of commitment, loyalty, consecration, submission, and yieldedness. It says in verse 16, Ruth said, Ruth said Entreat me not to leave thee. Or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go. And where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people. He said, I have forsaken my own people. The idol worshippers. The people that do not know the way of the Lord. I have forsaken them. Now your people have never seen them. Are they ugly? I don't know. Are they beautiful? I don't know. Are they rich? I don't know. Are they prospered? I don't know. Are they educated? I don't know. Are they nice, nice people? I don't know. Are they disciplinarians? I don't know. Much have decided that because of the gospel, because of the word of God, because of what you have taught me, thy people, whether they are rich or poor, 
Thy people, whether they are despised or ridiculed. Thy people, whether they are being persecuted and being treated or dribbled all about. Thy people, whether other people appreciate them or not. Thy people, whatever they write in the papers concerning them. Thy people shall be my people. That's consecration. That's yieldedness. That's a vow that she was making unto the Lord, but voicing it out unto Naomi. Where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Is it going to be a big house? I don't know. A small house? I don't know. Is it going to be a house with mosquitoes and cockroaches? I don't know. Is it going to be a thatched building? I don't know. But if you lodge there, if you stay there, if you can abide, if you can dwell there, where thou lodgest, I will lodge. And then it says, Thy people shall be my people, and thy God shall be my God. Thy God? Yes, the God who disciplined you. The God who removed your husband. The God who removed even my own husband, your son. The God who chastised because you left the land. The land of promise, the land of Canaan. And you came to the strange land. And he had said before that you will not have anything to do with those Moabites. And because he is a God that is pure, of purer eyes and to behold iniquity. I know that the hand of the Lord has been heavy upon you. I know you don't have money. I know you, the Lord has reduced you to poverty and penury because He's trying to bring out, refine you like gold. I know God has done that. I know you have been crying. I know you have been saying, see what God has done for me. That same God, the God of holiness, the God of purity, the God that will not allow sin in the life of any of His own people. I've not seen that God giving you too much money. I've seen you now, me. I know the house is the house you are living in Moab here is just it's a house that is attached and almost collapsing. I know that. I know that with all that we have been saying, the Lord has been saying until you go back home, I will not bless you. I know that. I know it's a God that is very, very strict. Yet that God will be my God. Isn't that consecration? Not the people that are saying there is no prosperity. Therefore I want to live. There is no money. Therefore, I want to leave. There is no child. Therefore, I am going. There is no husband. Therefore, I am going. Not only that, I have no friend here now, you know. Because all my good, good friends, they are on the other side. And as my friends have gone to the other side, I think I am going to. Ruth said, no friend, no acquaintance. All the people I ever knew, I can't find them anymore. They are gone. But then he said, I'll be going on. I set my feet on God's road. And never will I roam anymore. I set my feet on God's road. Never, never will I turn back anymore. And Ruth said, Naomi, go on. And you know, Naomi, you're an old woman. I'm a woman too. And the two of us, there's no man. And we're going on the road. Do we even know whether we two women, weak women, weak vessels, do we know whether we'll be able to get there? How about if these robbers meet us on the way? How about if all these gangs meet us on the way? We have no weapon. We have no cutlass. We have nothing. And all our load, everything we have, on this side of heaven, we pack everything into a little basket Naomi, look at all we have. It's in a single basket. But Naomi, not what we see. While we look at the things that we do not see, we do not look at the things that we see. Naomi, no property, no husband, no child. You don't have a child, I don't have a child. You don't have husband, I don't have husband. No house, you don't have, I don't have. We're going to the land of uncertainty. And the land of insecurity. What are we going to eat in the way? And when we get there, what are we going to eat? That's human consecration. Now me, let's forget that. Only one thing I know. Your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. And you see in verse 17. When, where thou diest. Where thou diest. I don't know. 
Whether when we get there, your people will even be able to bury you. How do I know? I've never been there myself before. But where you die, I don't worry about the Anglican burial ceremony, the Methodist, the Presbyterian burial ceremony, the Catholic burial ceremony. If they don't bury me when I die, if they don't bury you, they don't bury me. That's all right. That's all right. The will of the Lord be done. If it is the will of God that when we die, nobody will bury us. And our, our body will just be on the ground like that. If it is the will of God that when we die, they say that that deeper light church, they don't carry you to your village to bury you. It doesn't matter to me where you die. There I will die. And then she put a curse upon herself. And then she said, the Lord, do so to me. And more also, if I ever change, if aught but death, had thee and me and when she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her she left speaking unto her so they too went until they came where where that's where jesus was born where are you going where will you be stand up and let us pray are you ready to go with the Lord? Are you ready to commit yourself and go? Go on with the people of God until we get to the place where Christ is. Where the glory of Christ will shine. Until both of us, until all of us will get to the place where Christ will be glorified. Where the Savior of the world was born. Until they got into Bethlehem. Why are you dragging your feet? Why are you acting as if you are tired? Why don't you consecrate yourself, commit yourself, dedicate yourself unto the Lord and say, Lord, I will follow you. Oh Lord, I will follow you. I don't care for money. I don't care for prosperity. I don't care for husband. I don't care for children. I don't care for any of the things that all the people are talking about. I'm going on. I'm going on. I'm going on. I'm going on. Nothing will disturb me. Nothing will delay me. Nothing will drag me behind. Nothing will keep me down. I'm going on. Are you willing to follow the Lord? Are you willing to follow the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind? Not caring, not caring, not caring who joins you or who forsakes you. Not caring how many of your friends are going to stay. Not caring how many of your relatives are staying. Not caring how many of the people that have prayed to you before, that have helped you before. Not caring whether they are going or staying. Are you like Cruz? That will make up your mind. That you will follow through, you will follow the Lord till the very end. Consecrate today, make a vow today. Gather my saints together unto me. Those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Are you willing to follow the Lord? Follow the Lord with all your heart. Follow the Lord. Never, 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 never looking back. Never turning back to the world. Never turning back to the world. Not giving God condition. Not giving God condition. God, only if you do this, will I serve you? Only if you do this, will I serve you? Only if you do that, will I serve you? But following on, following on, following the Lord. Friends may leave. What does that matter? Jesus is still with you. Commit yourself to the Lord. Give yourself to the Lord. You have had a lot during this workers' retreat. You promise the Lord you will never go back. 
you will never go back. You will never go back. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Nothing. will take you away from the hand of Jesus. Consecrate your life to the Lord. Saying, come what may, come what may, come what may, I will follow the Lord till the very end. I will follow the Lord till the very end. Make a covenant with the Lord. I will never go back to the world anymore. I will never go back to the world anymore. The Lord has revealed His might and His truth unto you. Promise the Lord that you will stay with the truth, you will stand with the truth, you will stay with the people of God. We're moving on to Canaan. We're moving on to the land where God Himself is waiting for us. That country that has foundation, built by God Himself. But there's a price to pay. You will not worry about the disappointment of any friend. You will stay with the Lord. Stand by the Lord. Stand with the truth and stay with the truth. Until we see His face. Until we see His face. Until we see His face. Will, ne will not worry about what other people say, what other people do. We're going to follow the law till the very end. 